What's up? We're on here. Today on 3D Nerd Stop, we're going to do an unboxing on a Robo 3D R1 Plus personal 3D printer. How are y'all doing today? My name is Roland and I'm new to 3D printing and I decided I wanted to shoot these videos to take y'all on the adventure with me for 3D printing. I haven't ever owned a 3D printer before or even played with one so I thought it'd be interesting to show y'all from the beginning all the way through all the things I have to learn to make it work correctly. Um, I did a lot of research before I picked out a printer. I did decide on the Robo 3D R1 Plus. Um, the biggest reason would be the price point for the build volume you get for the features this printer has, um, for the amount of upgrades you can do to it, but what, using the printer, you know, it just, for the money, it made a lot of sense. So let's take a look at what comes in the box. Uh, first thing we should probably do is take a closer look at the box. All right, well, let's take a look at the front of the box here. It says Robo 3D, personal 3D printer, 3D printing software included, R plus one. Plug and play, fully assembled printer and software included. 20 great starter projects with thousands of online projects. Um, it says it's compatible with Windows and Linux and Microsoft OS. It says that its uh, build space is two times larger than the average 3D printer. Uh, it's 10 inches by 9 inches by 8 inches. Now let's take a look at the side of the box. All right, it has a bunch of features. Just to point out a few of them. Let's see, the print size, like you said, was 10 by 9 by 8, which according to this is 100% more 3D print space than the average consumer 3D printer. Um, the hot end is an all-metal hot end, which allows for printing in PLA, ABS, and over 15 plus specialty materials. Uh, this, this printer does have a headed, heated uh, platform for better adhesion for your models to stick to. Uh, but this printer does ha also have auto bed leveling. So that makes gives you more consistent prints. Let's see, uh, high quality 3D printing down to 50 microns, 0 0.05 millimeter layer thicknesses, 508 layers per inch. That sounds like it's pretty good. Uh, according to this, included in the box is 300 grams of uh, Robo Blue PLA 3D printer material. Um, let's see, a toolkit, software, quick start video, uh, power cable, uh, memory card, uh, fully assembled printer, software included. 20, again it says it like that, it says there's more 20 great models to start with on there, it says it's the easy way to start printing in 3D. Well, we've taken a good look at the box, why don't we jump to what's in the box, hey, let's check it out. Okay, let's take a look and see what comes inside the box. see what we've got here. We've got a whole bunch of stuff. We've got some paperwork, uh, setup instructions, a uh, quick tour. We have a user's, user's manual for it. Um, that looks like it'll be very helpful. We'll have to go through all that stuff soon. Ah. Here's the information for the Fusion 360 CAD software. Now, I actually do use this software already. Um, you can actually use this Fusion 360 for free as a hobbyist, as long as you're not using it for business purposes. And I believe you can even for startup businesses, as long as you're not making like over $100,000 a year. But this is a one-year subscription for it. And with this one year subscription, that's about a $300 value. So, set that aside. What else do we got here? Let's see. 
We got some cables, a USB cable and a power cable. We have an SD card here. Ah, there we go. Set that aside. We have a putty knife, which is used to scrape the 3D prints off the build plate. We have ourselves a nice looking little box up here. Uh, inside this box, there's a glue stick. Um, this is to help you get your 3D prints to stick on the build plate. There is a tube of lube. There you go. That's, I guess so you can lube up the screws and stuff so they don't stick on you. Have to look at what that's actually for. It's like we have some rubber feet here for it. That's nice. And a little tool kit. Uh, now this has a little itty bitty screwdriver, a little, and two Allen wrenches, and a nice pair of looks like needle nose. Nice little pair of. Uh, Tweezers. That's it. Tweezers. We'll keep all that right here in this for right now. What else do we have here? It looks like we have, looks like it's well stuck in there, so let's see if we can get some of this out of here. Not damaging the box too terribly bad. Oh, this is really stuck in there. Really stuck in there. Let's see what we can do here. Help it around a little bit. Yeah. Didn't want to have to cut the box up, but you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Just do a little bit of surgery on it here. There we go. Just to loosen it up just a little bit. See if that helps us get this piece out. Ah, there we go. Now we can see this stuff fits in here real tight. And we have the spindle holder here. Okay. Look down in the box. Ooh, this is nice. Looks really nice. The groove in the top looks really good. Looks like it has a thing for your filament to go into. Let's tip you all up so you can take a look at that. All right. Well, it looks like now all there is to do is lift it up out of the box. So that's what we're going to do. There we go. Okay, let's get the box out of the way here. Put this down here. Now it looks like we have a little box of blue PL, PLA filament that comes with it. Just a nice little roll of it. Nice little like babyish blue. That'll get it started. Let's see, we got anything up here in the front? Nope. Nothing in the back. Let's pull out these pieces of styrofoam. There you go. There's our first look at the print head. Very nicely packaged here. Pull out the styrofoam out from underneath the build plate. Do that in the front as well. There we go. Now, I know the build plate is magnetic, so it snaps right to it. And then we'll just pick this up, pick this off the bottom of it. There we go. And oh, we got it backwards here. Oh, wait. Let's turn that around. There you go. Now you can see the front of it. You can see it all the way around. Okay, well this is 
The Robo 3D R1 Plus printer. Looks really nice. Looks like they did a very nice job building this. Um, everything looks to be nice and clean. Everything was well packaged. Uh, nothing looks like it was rattling around while it was moving. Uh, the guide slot up here, it's not poorly cut. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's the prettiest cut slot in the world. They could have done a slightly better job cutting it, but it's not bad. It looks pretty good. Um, other than that, the rest of it looks pretty good. The build plate here moves out. You have your build area right here. And you have your hot end and extruder. And it all looks really good. Looks like it works real well. And we'll have to get it hooked up and checked out. All right, let's take a quick look here at the close-up of the extruder. This is the front of it. This would be the back of it. Um, then we have the hot end. This right here is the hot end. This is 0.4 millimeters. Um, then we have the build plate. The build plate here, this is a heated build plate. This helps the Model stick to the build plate so it doesn't curl up and doesn't mess up your prints. Um, here's a picture of the slot in the top where the filament goes down through it. And if you look right here in the center, you can see what I was talking about. That it's not perfect, but it is nice. I mean, as you can see, it's rather clean. It's just this one little spot right here where it looks like the bit they used to cut this chattered a little bit. And probably wasn't as sharp as it could be. They chipped it out a little. But no big deal. I mean, it's a plastic case. Things like that happen to them. Next week on 3D Nerd Stop, we'll actually hook up the printer, install the software to it, and print off our first print. So thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Please leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you, and have a great day. Next week on 3D Nerd Stop, we'll actually hook hook up the